Okay, welcome back to Think Tech Talks. Uh, I'm Jay Fidel. Here we are on Wednesday, and you know what Wednesday means. It's Hawaii, the state of clean energy, every Wednesday. And we are brought to you by Hawaiian Electric, uh, Hawaii Energy, and DBED, and we like that. And so we keep, we keep trucking. Um, and um, today we have Leslie Cole Brooks, who is the executive director? Right? Yeah, executive right. director of the Hawaii uh, Solar Energy Association, which, uh, if you didn't know, is HSEA. We're going to learn more about that. And Chris DeBone, who is the chairman of the board. We get a little bit of horsepower here today. This is serious. <laughs> Uh, of the Hawaii Solar President. Energy Association. President, yeah. yeah. Say hello to yeah. the people. Yeah. Say hello. Good. Hello. So, like, <laughs> charming. Come on. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Nice oh, was, that was really <laughs> charming. Yeah. <laughs> do I do I not have to be charming, or is no, it no, just no, this no, happens gonna go. automatically? <laughs> no. Are we going to do good? Oh, this is my chance. <laughs> this is your. This is it. I can be warm up into that. Okay, yeah. we're going to get. We'll 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 talk with Leslie more soon. But suffice to say that the, sh the episode today is entitled Meet the HSEA, Hawaii Solar Energy Association. But first, before we get into substance uh, on that, anyway, we're going to talk to Keith Block. He's with Hawaii Energy, and he's got a, he's got a thing about timers. You know, it's, you know, it's all about timing. It's all, it's all about, about timing. <laughs> no, generally we, uh, we try and split up things with you. We bring you high-tech solutions occasionally, and today we've got a, a very low-tech solution. It's called a water cooler timer. And really all it is is just a timer, but you know those bottled water coolers that everybody has and all the businesses have, and you know we tend to see them every day, but we never think about them? Those things are actually storing cold water in a small little reservoir inside, and hot water, if you have those options, hot and cold water. But they're storing a small reservoir of hot and cold water inside those uh, water coolers, and they're not very well insulated. So a typical non-Energy Star water cooler actually uses almost as much energy as a small refrigerator. So, and if you think about it, you know, you only really need cold and hot water while you're at work or if you happen to have one of these at work. So from five o'clock or six o'clock even for, till the next day at six in the morning, you really don't need those reservoirs to be hot and cold. So turning them off with a very simple timer can actually save half the energy that they use. Now I know you're gonna ask me for numbers. So. No, I first I'll ask you how much energy does the timer use? The timer doesn't use very much at all. Okay, and just actually, checking. Yeah. That's the one question I didn't research because <laughs> it uses so little energy that you really don't have to worry about okay. it. But a typical non-energy star water cooler uh, uses about 700 kilowatt hours per year, which in terms of our electric rates is about uh, $200 worth of electricity per ooh, year. Ooh. So, you know, that's a lot of money. Now, one of the things that Energy Star and the federal government has realized is all we need to do is insulate those a little bit better and we can cut that in half. So they've come out with standards for Energy Star water coolers. So first thing to do is make sure your water delivery company gives you an Energy Star uh, water cooler. And then the second thing to do is time it off when you're not there. And if you want to do that, we can provide you with a free timer. So uh, we're distributing these through the water cooler companies. Uh, right now, the Menahunis and the you know the, the water cooler companies will actually deliver a water cooler timer out to you if you're a business. Wow! And if you're not, you can go to our webpage, hawaiienergy.com, backslash timer, and it'll tell you all about the program, and it'll give you a selection at the bottom where you can go directly to a web page where you put in your address and we'll have a timer sent out to you. Keith, have you seen the timers? I mean, have you inspected them yourself? Yeah, they're they're actually very pretty. They're colored green because uh -huh. they're saving green energy. Green for green, of course. Green for saving energy. And uh, they're very easy to use. We have them pre-programmed for off at uh, five o'clock at night and back on at six the next morning for a typical office. But they are programmable. So if you want any other time, you can actually program whatever time you want into them, but preset for a typical office situation. So, and you can install them yourself, it's not a big thing, huh? Yeah, in fact, <clears throat> it's as easy as unplugging your water cooler, plugging in the timer, plugging the t cooler back into the timer. Let me see if I get this straight. You will give me, or in a case of a business, you will deliver to me a timer at no charge because you like me. That's right. And it's so cost-effective to time them off 
it's worth giving them out to save that much energy. Fabulous, fabulous. Another fabulous thing. You know, they, they don't sleep, these guys. At 2 o'clock in the morning, they're doing brain sessions, come up with these programs. Fabulous, Keith. Thank you so much for, for coming down and for sharing that with us. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. Come back soon. I will. Promise me. I will. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're going to take a short break now because we want to rearrange the uh, deck chairs. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Think Tech Talks, uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Meet the HSEA, Leslie Colebrooks and uh, Chris DeBone. We'll be right back after this short break. Castle and Cook, Hawaii. Investing in Hawaii, creating communities and providing for the needs of our state. Collateral Analytics, empowering the real estate industry to make better informed property investment decisions. The Foreign Trade Zone, bringing the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone programs to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. Galen Ho, a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. Hawaiian Electric Company, and its affiliates Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, incorporating diverse perspectives to design a flexible and forward-looking energy strategy. Hawaii Energy, the state's energy and efficiency program created to help Hawaii's residents and businesses adopt a clean energy lifestyle. Hawaii Gas, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Hawaii Pacific Health, bringing technology and teamwork together to transform healthcare in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, attached to DBED, is the state's leading technology agency. The Scheidler Family Foundation, supporting educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including- Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii, broadcasting live from the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. We raise public awareness about tech, energy, and globalism in Hawaii. Technology is critical to our state. A vibrant tech sector will give us new prospects in the global marketplace and will offer great careers and make our economy more resilient. Streaming live on Ustream and Spreaker, ThinkTech allows its hosts and guests invaluable opportunities to report important events and discuss important questions and to be heard here in Hawaii and around the world. You can find links to our live streams on thinktechhawaii.com or on our mobile website, m.thinktechhawaii.com. And you can see our archive on YouTube. It's all just a click away. We want to do whatever we can to keep Hawaii relevant, connected, and thriving in the complexity of the 21st century. We hope you will help us in those efforts. Tune in today. This is ThinkTech. I'm Jay Fidel. Bye. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're at Think Tech Talks on a given Wednesday. Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Meet the HSEA, the Hawaii Solar Energy Association, and its two senior officials, Leslie Colebrooks, executive director, and Chris DeBone, chairman of the board. And let the record reflect that Ray Starling of Hawaii Energy has joined us at the table in the absence, I suppose, of Sharon Moriwaki, who is busy. Yes. She's <laughs> Always. missing the party. <laughs> Thank you for coming down, Ray. My pleasure. Okay, so the first thing is, what is this HSEA? Um, there's a lot of solar stuff happening. It's clear that in the past five years, I, even going back to 2008, you guys have exploded. Exploded with installations, with generating a lot of electrical energy, uh, with, um, you know, the whole state is watching you, involved in your process. You are, you are a, a top priority with the legislature, the PUC, the public, the utility. Everybody's watching you. How can you stand the pressure? I don't understand it. This is the biggest thing that's happening in energy. Nobody will disagree with that. And, uh, and you know, I need, I need for you guys to explain how you did that, what, you know, why, what the factors were that made that happen, what the challenges are. I'm sure you can discuss that. And how this is going to happen going forward, okay? We need a path from you. And tonight is more than a, a radio, it's not radio at all, actually. Tonight is more than an internet video and, and radio show. It's more than, you know, putting it on, uh, on Olelo. Um, tonight we are going to find a way, right? Ray and me and you guys. 
Is that, do we accept the challenge? All right. All right, find a way. Okay, Leslie, Absolutely. say what? Hey, well, oh, let me just start. In case this, any of the listeners don't know, our viewers, the Hawaii Solar Energy Association is a nonprofit trade organization. We've been around since 1977. So that's what now, 38 years going on? That was before Cody yeah, Chuck uh, yeah. was born, was it? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. He's just been, yeah. Oh, you said he's been 19, having a lot of yeah, he's been oh. having a lot of fun. So, um, 38, 37 years of advocacy. You're totally right. We're down at the legislature. We're at the PUC. We're um, interveners in five dockets right now. We're at the city and county. We're with the utility, talking to them, trying to find solutions to things, and it's just taken off. Why? Because renewables just make sense for Hawaii. As, as, as you've talked about so much on your show. And um, people know that uh, rooftop and commercial size and utility scale, they're all an important part of the mix. And we've got the tax credit still, and the- He's tax credit you know, issue, you mean? Yeah, 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 but they're still here, and now is the time to, to get things on the roofs and in the ground, because um, the cost of energy of fossil fuels is not going to go down or go away. And it, it, it no, people forget sense. that sometimes. You know, uh -huh. they get distracted. They don't. They don't remember the big neon sign in the sky. I know. It you know me that nuts. We, we're on borrowed time here. Yeah. And we really got to move. Tick, tick, yeah. Okay. So what about that, Chris? Do you disagree with? Um. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna put us actually. Well, okay. <laughs> That's unfair. Now this is. <laughs> You got to give him a, a like that was an easy on ramp for me, and I've done this before. And Chris is our new president. So glad to have him um, as president of HSEA. He's just a steady guy, you know, and he's and he believes that having a good time makes sense. But he's super smart too, and it's a great combination. So, well, thank you. So yeah, yeah. So. Um, what yeah, part of no. that don't you agree with? <laughs> well, I'm just going back to HSEA. It started with uh, solar water. I mean, right. solar water, we have yeah. to remember where this all started. It was in solar water, you know, demand side management, reduction, reduction. Right. Solar PV, photovoltaic electricity, started booming about five years ago. Uh, that was just, now there's two parallel going on, solar water still going, the photovoltaics, and, and renewable energy is winning the popular vote. It's just happening. It's, it's one. It's 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 the more popular. You, when you say renewable energy, you mean you mean PV, right? Because some parts of renewable energy, and talk to Cynthia Thielen, she won't she won't agree with that. She'll say she'll say maybe some parts, but not yeah. other parts. Yeah. yeah. PV is and solar water or the rooftop where people can take over their own historical payments going forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, they 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 can. They can rein in their energy costs themselves on their own roof. Distributed generation is, is winning. What does that say? The Hawaii Energy Con Con Connection. Connections. Is yeah. that a is that a, a solar installer company? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay, so so you, the board you're in right members. Place, then. Oh yeah, the board members were. I'm. It's just uh, our own time that are on the board of HSEA as either installers or suppliers of the industry. We just come together and try to advocate for. Well, are you the sole advocate? Because I have a recollection that um, Mark Duda and a coalition, right? Is that still happening? We've got a co solar coalition and also the Solar Energy Association. Are they in the same space? I don't know. Same space, yes. Yep. Yeah. Same, yeah. Same goals, yeah. just different different associations. So when you go into the legislature on something, you usually find both of them there taking a position? Things. Yes. Okay. Although we advocate for solar hot water as well as photovoltaics and PV coalition is, is the coalition is uh, only is, PV. Is PV and right. and hasn't doesn't have the history that HSEA does back to 1977 so that's different too. Okay, so will you agree with me that we're at a, kind of a crossroads because you talk about distributed, you know, and there's issues about the the cable. I don't, I'm not sure what your position is on that, and there's issues about the the solar um, credits. And there's issues about interconnect. We, we're at a, a kind of an intersection where all these issues have popped up. No wonder you have all these things happening in Europe. You have to talk to so many people, and, and that's why we're here to resolve all of them. Right? <laughs> it's amazing so how this works, you know. <laughs> the power of think tech. Kumbaya. <laughs> Thank you. And that's yeah, later. Right, right, right. We get to sing later. <laughs> okay, so yeah. there's a few issues. Let me identify them, and you can, you know, say, 
whatever. Um, first, first of all, the interconnect thing. Um, <clears throat> now, you know, there's been all this talk about how, uh, you know, uh, the utilities big bad guy and doesn't want to allow interconnection. But, you know, don't you agree that there's some point where you just, you can't spill all of this, uh, what do you call it, net, net energy metering uh, power back on the utility. There's some point where it goes bad. You agree with that? Where is the point? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out. Right, and that's why the interconnection bills, so there's two interconnection bills right now for grid modernization at the um, legislature. Well, tell us how that works. What does that bill say? Well, what, well, and so there's one in the Senate, one in the House. Um, the one in the House is the favorable one because it gives more detail as to how it is. It's, it's, um, it's proposing that a docket be picked up by the PUC that really focuses on interconnection and what to do about the technical aspects and what to do about the cost-benefit aspects. So, uh, yeah, you know, if we had every single rooftop had PV and there was more energy generated than there was load, then there is, there is an issue, right? Because where does it go? It's not like we export it to another state. But what if you had battery storage where you could absorb that excess energy and then sell it at peak load in the evening? Or what about the fossil fuel generators that we have that are being um, mothballed? Um, that you know that they, they don't need them anymore because the load has been reduced because of um, rooftop and because of efficiency and other things. So I, I so know you, we just you, have this hour to solve the problem. At the, <laughs> at the PUC, I mean, I'm, I'm fresh on this really. Is that the way you started talking? I mean, I I always thought that um, somebody came to the PUC and said we just you know like to file a paper to start a docket. Um, or the PUC decided of its own motion, the way it did in the investigation documents on uh, dockets on uh, on a cable, and I think on Big Wind. You know, last summer it it decided to start a couple of dockets, so it did it on its own motion. But you hear, you I don't understand. You you went to the legislature and said, we want you to pass a statute requiring the PUC to start a docket. Is that new? Um, I don't know that it's new, but it is one way because the legislature is the the boss basically of the PUC, right? The PUC is a, is a creature of the legislature. I don't know, if creature is the right word to use. Maybe but not a, boss either, but, but yeah, maybe uh, not boss. But but they give direction to the PUC, and the PUC is, um, you know, was created through a legislative process. So it it is one way. Well, it, it, it so, seems like the people, yeah. the power of the people, yeah. right? More and yeah. more legislatures were getting calls from frustrated consumers trying to interconnect and having more of an order of an issue. They talk to the Solar Association, they get the phone calls, <clears throat> they're trying to please the people in their district for real, hey, what, there's a real problem, or what are we going to do? It's their job and duty mm -hmm. but to, to be able to help. So why what they the do you see just do this? Well, yeah, it's... The question. I mean, did you try? Did that, someone so. try? Did, did did anybody try? I mean, w would they say no? Well, you, you, I, obviously they haven't opened a docket to consider this as right. you're you're asking the legislature to, to mandate. But but they are they're juggling a lot of balls right now. The the uh, don't they feel this is important? Well, it is important, but but I'm saying that they they understand the issues very well, and they have their own ideas about how they think they should resolve them. I, and I'm not speaking from actual knowledge, but I'm just saying that they they're looking at the big picture. They read the newspapers. They understand the issues that are out there, uh, but they they have their mechanisms already in place to uh, to be looking at these issues and, and coming up with solutions. And there's so many things going on right now that I think to some extent we need to, um, we need to let the PUC uh, sort of decide how they think it all ought to come together. If we have too many, and a lot of times you see the legislature will start out with mandating something and in the, in the process of the legislative process, they end up with um, with making recommendations because it is, in fact, the PUC that has the responsibility for making all this work out. Mm -hmm. uh, but what strikes me is is that this is. I mean, I think all four of us and everyone out there will agree. It's a big issue. 
this is, is the, this is the yes. this is the log jam issue. Yes, it is. And we have to get through this one way or the other. We're going to get through it tonight. Yeah. tonight. Yeah. Oh, We're I'm gonna, so glad to hear that. You but, know, but wait, but why then doesn't the PUC put this at the top of the priority list? I think that's the question. Well, yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. it's been years yeah. of people trying to figure out in the frustration of uh, you hear the argument all the time from people and just the general public, John Q. Public saying, haven't they not known this was coming? It's been four or five years of exponential growth, and and why has it not kept up with the grid modernization of bringing it up now, to? Now you're, now you're talking about HECO. Yeah, 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 but the I'm PUC talking about the legislature and the PUC. You know, and you know, that, one of the things we've talked about is who's really there. in charge yeah. on this. Good and point. Uh, <laughs> part of our discussion tonight is where where is the leadership? Who should we look to? Who is the person who you know starts the play? You know, who where does it come from? Anyway, sorry. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, that, I just wanted to. Um, Another aspect of this bill is that it, it gives money to the PUC to do the study. Because a lot of times, it seems like with a lot of legislation, there's an unfunded mandate, right? Like, go forth and solve this problem. But if you're going to look at, for instance, modernizing the grid and asking these questions and doing the analyses, you need experts to come in. You know, it's not, it's not something that the average person has the answer to. Are you to. saying that this docket, the one you're this, seeking this in this bill, legislation, yeah. you know, it's like Passover. Why is this docket? different from all the other pockets. Is there some difference that we need to know, understand about well, this? Well, money is you, being allocated but, but to this. But they have a lot of dockets. They don't get special appropriations for the other dockets. You want to give them money on this docket. Why is this docket different than the other dockets? Probably because the interconnection but and the you're level the of the bill, so you know is, why, is, right? Is, what um, is it? Because things have really kind of stalled out because of our interconnection. We're supporting the bill. Yeah. We didn't make the bill. We're Who supporting the bill? the bill. I didn't make well, the bill. Well, there's two Did different. There's two different bills. Did you make this bill? <laughs> <laughs> I think Bill made the bill. Who's Bill? Where's Bill? <laughs> <laughs> okay, whoever yeah. made the yeah. bill. What is the bill really seeking here? It sounds to me like this is a different docket, a different investigation. For example, than the one on the cable, which is a billion-dollar project. That's a, you know, serious effort. Why don't they have a special appropriation for that? Um, or the one about Big Wind, which is a, another investigative doctor. I mean, all these things are important in their own way, but I don't understand why this one needs special appropriation. Well, it's, um, I don't know if I it's, guess it's necessarily special appropriation, more than just saying that if you just ask someone to do that at the PUC, they need to be funded to be able to have the resource to do so. So it needs to be included in the bill. Well, and, and I think both of you have really hit the real point. There's there's a lot of discussion about you know the PUC being very slow and, and methodical and not getting things done as quickly as as one would like. Uh, but and, and there's there's even questions about whether the the current chair will be reappointed as the chair going yep. forward. And I think that's. Th those are legitimate questions to ask, but I think if you dig deeper, the problems uh, with the PUC have to do with the fact that they're badly underfunded. They are, they're underfunded, they cannot, uh, they, they hire good people, but the good people are pulled away because they can go elsewhere and do, um, do basically the same kind of work and and, uh, and have a much higher pay. Yep. And so <clears throat> you have this problem with, you know, people come to the PUC and uh, the staff members are, are there because they believe in it and, and they want to do uh, a lot for our, our state. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, uh, they keep getting uh, uh, money that's, that's, not, that's not funded for their entire process. And uh, and their their uh, budget is raided, and and I think there's some other legislation that's trying to correct there that. There is, but yeah, but that's right. the real yeah. thing. And when you get that going, unfortunately, you, when you have to bring in a whole new staff on a regular basis because you can't keep them fully funded and paid uh, a, a salary that would keep them there, uh, you end up going backwards or, or not going forward as fast as we would all like it. So I think that the real issue really has to do with, with money, 
being given to the PUC to operate and then then not taking it back. Right, ultimately. and this was just specific for that sole purpose. And it, it, we would think that it gives it a much better chance to succeed within the PUC to be funded and, and take that barrier down and get it. Really, I mean, I, yeah. I just as a gut reaction, I, I mean, it sounds like micromanagement to me. The legislature is presumably not as well qualified as the PUC to determine the priorities. Um, it knows the policy, of course. It adopted the policy, but you know, from docket to docket, telling them to what docket to open, funding this docket but not that docket. Uh, that that really sounds like, you know, new 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 territory. But anyway, let me let me move on to uh, another issue that's kind of related, and that is inherent in these bills is that the process as it exists without the intervention of the legislature on this issue isn't working, right? And I, I guess part of it, because I've heard this before, is that the utility is not responding to the problems in the field, um, and that, uh, you know, uh, whatever, you know, you guys want in the way of information to participate in a process that would let you work it out, you're not getting. Um, and that's why it would seem to me that, uh, you know, whoever has made this bill is making this bill. Um, but the question is, what, what is the status of it without the legislature? Why are we jammed up? Um, can you talk about that? What, what is it that isn't working in, in the landscape right now? In the last year, they've replaced four of their seasoned attorneys. And those are the guys, the PUC, replaced four of them. They've gone elsewhere. And when you have that kind of turnover of people who have a historical understanding of where things have been and where, they're, where the plan was to take it within the PUC, they're thinking about how we, how we juggle all these things together and push them forward. When you take their seasoned people and allow them to leave because the, the work environment in terms of, you know, so much work to do and not enough people to get it done, uh, then you, you basically stall everything that's going on. So you can, you can feed, uh, you know, you can give special appropriations for just one thing, uh, but if you don't, if you don't fix the, the, the underlying problem of enough money to make the whole process work well, I don't think you're gonna solve it because you'll, you'll fix one thing, but, but all the other pieces working, have to though. come. What isn't working? Well, uh, you know, it sounds to me, one of the issues here is that the, the question of whether a given connection should be allowed or not is a technical question. And I, what I hear in, this, in the context here is that um, there's a disagreement about what that point is. Some people think it ought to be easier, some people think it ought to be harder, uh, or at least some people think it you know, requires some other kinds of um, parameters. But what, you know, what, is there a disagreement on, on where you find the line? Is there a disagreement on how you establish you know, the point of connection and the permission to connect? I mean, isn't, isn't that something that can be worked out? You know, if you have a highly technical issue, to go to a, a fancy pants experience, whether it be in court, whether it be in a legislature or not, you're not really all that likely to reach a good solution because the, tech, the technical things are easy to find if you have technical people in the room. Um, you know, science, it's technology, it's, you know, put them together and they'll well, work it out. Why hasn't that happened? Part of this docket, and it's actually, fun, it's the PUC, well, before, it's Hawaiian Electric. Before the docket, well, why hasn't this worked out? Because Hawaiian Electric has their engineers and their engineers' opinion. And it the, the grid was Do you disagree designed. with their opinion? No. Well, we don't know. That's the problem. We don't know what their opinion is because we're not at the table helping them on trying to solve the issues. We're a renewable energy industry that well, knows about renewable energy. just have your energy. engineer call their engineer in the morning? That's the problem. Do you have you an just, engineer? We, our industry has hundreds of engineers. All of our manufacturers, all of our representatives make the inverters that are grid compliant to help support the utility grid. Are they at the table with the HECO engineers I'm to be able to about, find these I'm problems? talking about grid engineers. I mean, not people who want, work with one part of it or install on one residence or one commercial but who building. who should be the, at that table that's the expert on knowing how to make a device connect to the grid? The utility knows the grid. 
but the renewable energy industry, the experts, and knowing how to make grid compliant devices with renewable energy to support and run with their grid. Okay, so you think the engineers That's their in the industry, component. What, what, the engineers what? in the industry know about the compliant devices, the engineers in the utility know about the technology of the grid itself, Right. and they could get together and, haven't they? It's, it's they have, but how how is it an open forum to be able to sit down in a technical space and to be able to go through these and have have opinions on both sides in an open forum? And that's what this doc is kind open of. Open forum troubles me. What do you mean by that? Well, a, a, a technical advisory group that is a partnership between the industry and the utility to be able to come up with solutions. Uh, every technical solution. Oh, or, open I mean, forum, what is that open forum? I, get, I, I have yeah. vi visions of people hanging on chandeliers, right. you know, and screaming and making These noise. are engineers, so, I assure you, there are no hanging from engineers. <laughs> <laughs> from, 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 you know. At least I don't think so. I, I think it's that maybe in the past, we, we've been told that um, Hawaii, because of the renewables that we have online now, we've reached these limits that are unprecedented, right? Yep. And that they, um, they're, they're not sure what's next and how to move forward. And they have a, a legislative mandate to provide safe and reliable power. And the question is, well, is it safe and is it reliable to move forward? So our response is we have a lot of resources from companies that, for instance, do um, business in other countries that have breached and exceeded these limits safely that can come in and share their knowledge. And it, it seems to be happening in this piecemeal way where the progress seems slow. Or, so you have engineers. Yeah. You have grid engineers. Oh, yes. If you not, just, about, not just device engineers, but grid engineers. Oh, yeah. If you look at the top solar manufacturers today, the, on the inverter and the panel size, they are capitalized well over Hawaiian Electric. These are multi-billion dollar corporations worldwide, huge. And they have, they've taken engineers off of grid on staff to do nothing more than to find and solve the problems that they know are going to be out there with the utility grid. Well, how do you get that information to the utility grid? When the utility has they, a problem they talk with the to these guys talk? Well, that's, how do, you, how do you do that? So you get a specification, you turn it into Hawaiian Electric, they run it through, and they give you an answer weeks later. Okay, but what I, what I, if you shake it and bake it, what I hear you saying is that, that we get certain opinions from the utility here um, to the effect that, you know, this circuit, too much, or that circuit, too much. You can't come on, we, you know, we're not going to let you do that, blah, blah, blah. Um, and um, and you don't accept that because of something. Um, and I think part of it has to be that you're a trade association and your members are you know, determined to install as much solar as they can. Um, that would be your, your driver. I mean, it's not like you're representing me. I'm not a PV user. I don't have it on my house. I don't even have solar hot water on my house. <laughs> Sorry, I mentioned that. God, God will forgive me for it. <laughs> How could I possibly I bet be you here? Have in I'm shocked. Light bulbs in your house. I can't, I can't <laughs> believe I'm Where's saying, my car? I'm saying I'm this close to you. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, somebody has to look for the greater good, okay? And, and that's the leadership thing that Ray and I have been talking about for a couple of years. Um, so you guys are a trade association just the way, I don't know, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association was a trade association representing certain kinds of constituents and memberships. Um, so who is looking for the common good? Well, are you saying that uh, that distributed generation isn't part of the common good? Is that what you're I, I'm going to answer that question right? by taking a break. <laughs> Not because I can't, <laughs> but because I would like to pose another question that I think is totally relevant to our discussion. So we take a very short break here. That's Leslie Cole Brooks and uh, Chris DeBone, uh, both of the Hawaii Solar Energy Association, and a fellow all the way over to my left, a handsome one. Excuse me, Chris. Oh, thanks. Is, is Ray Starling of Hawaii <laughs> Energy, our co-host today. We'll be right back after this short break. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia In Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. 
And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Alalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Incandescent bulbs. Must be. Like you did in here. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're not kidding. <laughs> this is uh, Think Tech Talks, Hawaii, the state of clean energy here on a Wednesday. Uh, and we're meeting the HSEA, the Hawaii Solar Energy Association, <coughs> excuse me, with uh, Executive Director Leslie Cole Brooks and Chairman of the Board Chris DeBone. So the question I pose to you is, is about my problem. I'm in a kind of hypothetical, but I'm real too. I don't have BV. Actually, I have a lot of uh, LEDs in my house, but that's that's not relevant right now. And I pay a lot of I pay a big bill. Okay, um, and I'm you know I'm one of the old-fashioned guys. Sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, but the question is: uh, As the number of uh, PV installations goes up, I mean, you've probably heard this a thousand times. Um, you know that means that the guys who are um, doing the PV are paying seventeen dollars a month or whatever the exact number is. I don't know, um, and um, you know, and and they're selling to the utility at what do you call it? At, at really the prime rate, the rate that the utility is selling back to everybody else. But they're getting a pretty good rate on on the, uh, the net energy metering, um, and uh, the, the utility has got all this obligation to put all these pieces of equipment in to handle uh, all of that PV that's increasing all the time. I'm paying for that, and I'm paying for the tax credits too, which are still in pretty much full throttle. So I'm paying for this, 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 and this, all this stuff, and what am I getting out of it? I still have to pay $400, um, and, I'm, and I'm winding up, you know, it's all on my back somehow, and they're 90% are me right now, and soon they'll be 80%, 70%, and as it goes down, I'm going to wind up paying a larger share. How do you answer that? Who's looking out for me? You guys looking out for me? Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, we are looking out for you. Yeah, I mean, there's so much, that, so many ways to respond to that. Um, first, the legislation, but I want to back up a little bit that because we hear that a lot, right? All that, the time. That, that the rooftop person, yep. oh, so selfish, you know, it's just them and they're the like, only one that oh, benefits. Oh, I'm not calling you know? anybody selfish. Oh. I'm just oh, saying they're, they're, that other people are. No, so other people are. Oh, not you, not you. You would I'm never say that, you know. Else's, yeah, you're paying I'm somebody, paying somebody else's, else's freight. Yeah. I'm not getting any right, benefit. Right, right, right. So, and that's right, what right, we right, want right, to get right. down to. Are you mocking me? Oh, geez. Don't get her started. I think so. Yeah, really. Part of the, the analysis of what are you paying for and are there benefits to other rate payers when we have more PV? And it's interesting with, with efficiency because the PUC determined that when people use less energy through efficiency, all rate payers benefit. And that's why we all pay the PBF on our bill, right? So if you live, say, in an apartment and you got a new tiller, we would all pay for that, even though you would directly benefit from it because your bill would go down, hopefully, with a more efficient tiller. But it's something that's been determined a benefit to all rate payers because it's, it's good for the whole state when we use less energy. So why isn't PV treated the same way? And then you look at the, um, what was it, just three weeks ago that the um, fossil fuel generator right down here in, in, uh, in downtown was, was, was mothballed, yeah. right? And the, the utility said itself that it was in part because of the increased rooftop. So what would be the cost in 2014 dollars to all rate payers to say we had to mothball it and now we're going to have to pay X to build a new one. But they don't have to do that because of the increased generation from rooftop. And that's a benefit to everybody. Well, and then it was I always think about something that. about how if, if, um, if you if you added some money on that $17 bill, you'd have to add money on that $17 bill to equalize this, make it fair. Um, would you would you guys be, you know, agreeable to increasing that $17 for the people who have the PV? Well, in fact, that's part of House Bill uh, 1943, Increasing House Bill 2. No, of doing a comprehensive, transparent cost-benefit analysis so we can see what are the costs, what are the benefits, because we hear this so much, 
and we want to see what it is and what would be fair. And, with, but but, but theoretically, you're, yeah. not, you're not opposed to it. No, you're not. No. And Leslie and I talk about this all the time. We argue about it all the time. It's not a very popular topic within the association, and I'm in the business. I sell and install solar photovoltaic systems, and I'm one of the first people that talk about saying at some point, we're getting out of the first phase of solar photovoltaic grid-tied PV system, where it's just wild AC going in, it had to be a stepped phase to get into it, and with current inverter technology alone today, there and storage. I mean, everyone's talking about storage. Where should it be? Who's going to pay for it? How's it going to be interacted? It has huge benefits to the grid, benefits for all of the ratepayers that allows them to turn a photovoltaic system into firm, technically spinning reserve, which is an exponential value with, with, storage. Storage. with storage and even without storage. I know it's maybe it's, I don't know if it's a, the right technical format to get into it right now. But you can, with a grid tight inverter without storage right now, firm it up. There, there's a lot of information on, on our technology. Well, the same to be able thing with the so. cable. The cable includes technology that would help firm it up. But uh, you know, going back to um, you know the issue of uh, the, the money right. here. So okay. Uh, so theoretically, if you increase the, uh, you know, see, I want to be the last man standing, right? That's the problem. Yep. If I'm the last man standing, I want to spend a fortune, you know, to keep the grid. Uh, working for the benefit of people who use it only some of the time. Um, and so uh, I think uh, one solution would be to increase that, and the amount, of course, is difficult to determine. Another way is to take net energy metering rates that the, that the utility pays back to the PV owner who, you know, sends them electricity um, and, and lower them, yep. uh, you know, to account for the fact that it costs money to run the grid. It's not, it's not an even exchange because the utility has the obligation of running the grid. And so that's the second thing. So you, you guys, is that part of the same calculation or is that a different calculation? Yes, or a hybrid of the two. Our industry distributed generation and the solar industry is now talking about we have to compete with the value of other renewable energy because it's now the cost to the ratepayer of everyone else on the grid. We, what is the value of PV to everyone else on the grid to lower costs for everybody because a photovoltaic system, you're not paying for a fuel to generate it and you're not paying for the capital cost to do it. So there has to be a cost benefit to everyone on, uh, everybody. Somebody in a third floor apartment that can't put PV panels oh, on. Oh sure, that is or those condos that don't have the benefit. Absolutely. No. And that's in that. So somebody has to look at this and adjust things. Yep. And, the, and the third element that I can think of is the is the uh, the tax credit itself, because if I'm not buying PV, uh, I live in a rainy neighborhood anyway. I'm not so sure I should. But um, if I'm not buying PV, you can convince me otherwise if you like. Um, then um, I, I don't care about the tax credit. And frankly, if you ask me, if you give me a little survey, do you want your tax money going to solar credit? I would say. Not really. Not after all this time. The, you know, as credits are supposed to incentivize the industry up to a point, but not forever. So there's a sunset. I don't know if it's a sunset anyway. It's coming. And they've been greatly reduced. I don't know yeah. if anyone knows the reason why it's not up for debate this year. Usually every year it's up. There, there's not, there's not nothing up right now. Because, because the governor yeah. came up with a plan, yeah. administrative rules, that the tax department Oh, this is the ones that everybody was so unhappy about well, last year. Yeah, but it, it, it's sustainable. We're, and everyone kind of looked at them, let it get through that, oh my gosh, the world's ending and everything. It's like, let's really see how it impacts it. It's sustainable for the state. Yeah. It's economic growth. Yeah. It's been greatly reduced. <clears throat> when does and, it expire? Uh, there is no sunset date. Not on that. But the federal tax credit is due to expire at the end okay. of 2016. We, we, okay, we, so we, I'm, I'm still, legislation I'm still, ratcheting down over years. We, we as the industry said, let's tear this thing down so, so we don't come up to a wall. Does the Solar Association, is the Solar Association like to see those rules change? Wasn't there a bill to try to change those tax rules? No, not this year. No. So you, you buy that. Well, yeah, yeah, it's done. Board with let's, we said it's there's, there's interconnection is a yeah. much bigger issue. Yeah. And now how do we get the technical challenges and the fairness and equality for everyone, we have to get our industry distributed generation 
to support other ratepayers on the grid. And it's against PV farms, it's against wind, it's against everyone else, because it's going to come down to a money thing. Well, let's it's talk about storage. You thing. mentioned storage. I think it's got to be a central element in this. The technology isn't here yet. <clears throat> we don't have storage that we really, really like. Um, people are reluctant to put in the money because it's ex way expensive yeah. and because the technology isn't here yet. Let me, let me step up and say Please. that we've had storage for years. Uh, when you think about storage, you're thinking yeah. about electric true. storage. True, yeah. yeah. But if you take the ultimate energy product that you want to make with electricity and make it now and store it, then that's the same thing as the electricity that you're thinking about. But that storage has been around. Solar water is stored energy. And that's been around since uh, your, what, your association since yeah. like the right? yeah. load yeah. is going up at what, dinner time, right? And way up like that. Uh, and then the, the photovoltaic generation is going down at dinner time most of the year. That's true. Okay, and you know, well, but, we, we but, need storage to cover okay, that gap. But, but, you, uh, there's there's also there's hot water storage, but there's also cold water storage. Talk right? about lighting the building, lighting your house. No, no, no. But you, if if you are lighting the building and also air conditioning the building, yeah, you can get rid of the air conditioning, so you've got more money. You've got more electricity no, by storing the cold to air condition your building. You can. Uh, have more electricity available at the time when you need it for turning on the lights. Point taken, but when, when the sun goes down and there's no PV and everybody comes home from work, turns on every utility they can, every appliance they can find, how are you going to, with, you, with PV uh, and with the existing okay. let's system, say, let's say, how you, are you going got, to cover the gap? You've got a large building, uh, let's say a hotel, okay? Its chillers run 24-7. All right, so you make some ice or just chilled water. You do not have to make ice. You can just store cold water. It takes a bigger device or bigger uh, container. You just make cold water. And at, when the sun goes down and you lose all that PV, you've got a whole bunch of cold water that you then start, you turn your chillers off and start running that cold water that you've stored and the effect is you don't know the sun went down as far as the grid is concerned and the amount of electricity that's being used you've got the equivalent of has anybody done this sure it's it's done on the mainland what but done, here here well it had it was done here uh, and the reason it was able to be done was two things they had some off-peak mm -hmm. rates that you could make work, but you also had a uh, tax credit that was very good and okay. allowed you to overbuild the system, which what the is what the tariffs required you to do. It's it's uh, it's a little complex, but well, I, you know, I think it doesn't it get to the done. it doesn't get to the point. Right now, we got a problem, and the right now problem is we don't have firm power. We got to get firm power if you want to solve the interconnect problem. You know, you've got to have storage, really, in my opinion. And we don't have storage. We don't have, we have Joseph turning it, and I think Pedro is, what's his well, name? Well, storage oh. is, I think it's well on its way. And especially where, where with, with the prorated cost of upgrades, because PV customers pay prorated costs of, of any upgrades that need to be done. And what on Maui, what, it's 600 to $1,600 a kilowatt, right? The, the range well, yeah. of where, the cost. Where, where is it? What, it, it's it's is it on happen. the distributed side? Well, is it on the utility side? Where is it? Right now it's on the distributed side. The utility side started to work with it in mm -hmm. uh, Kapolei, I think, or uh, mm -hmm. somewhere out there. Mm -hmm. They put a megawatt or putting a megawatt test system in into an actual grid to have it a buffer zone to be able to basically make a solar shock absorber. That's what everyone's trying to you know, sure. bring it in and expand it out. Um, without net metering, and without a reasonable net metering mechanism or something similar to it, in Hawaii, the value proposition is you can go completely off-grid with battery and still be on the positive. And that's starting to happen right now. Without that mechanism, people are starting. The technology's been available since the 70s. 
with a, with a battery. Yeah, and for, people, for the residents. More and more people are already it's starting like to do it. Like fifteen thousand dollars to start, you know, actually. What are your HECO payments over the next twenty years? It's it's all it's a math okay, equation. So that's, that's the problem. Is that covered by on bill financing? Is it covered by on bill financing? Is not that, that, a mechanism. Uh, yeah. It won't in the initial stages, but the statute that set up the on bill mechanism is is uh, would allow that, yeah. and, and I think eventually mm -hmm. you'll see. So under gems, do you think? Well, it's a, yes, under yeah. gems. Mm -hmm. so if you look at the statute for the money that's the public benefits fund. Uh, they they expanded it greatly as to what you could use that money for. It used to be uh, efficiency. Right, right. Now yeah. it's just about Sorry, anything yeah. that has the concept of clean and energy in it. Then you get Which federal. You get federal credit on it also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you're talking about as more and more people get off the grid. Now your situation that you're talking about is becoming a reality. Yes. Because there's nothing that the utility can do about it because that's a lost customer off the grid not paying anything. The mechanism, the utility grid needs to be in place. It needs to be healthy, it needs to be sustainable. It, they are a value to the so consumers, and, right? How do you, how do you, just make, how do you, how do you deal with Well, that? it's the value of solar. And this is not just in Hawaii. But if everybody gets off the grid, and the grid's still mm -hmm. there for guys like me, well, not to, no, who's no. gonna pay for it? We need a mechanism so that people don't have to do that. Any we ideas? Do, well, th th and that comes to the cost justification of the value of solar on the grid. We would argue that the value of the excess energy, even currently under net metering agreement, going out and allowing, so the utilities ramp and ramp up and ramp down all these power plants. They're not paying for the power going in, they're allowing them, they don't make 36 cents for every kilowatt generated at a power plant, they don't. Some get spinning reserve, all of these different things. The, every kilowatt of excess that goes in, we're already arguing the fact that that value in there right now isn't a drain to other ratepayers. It's insignificant. At some point, as it gets from 90 to 80 to, as we you know chip it away so it's less and less, re, or more and more renewables, there's that crossing point. And then what's the value proposition to be able to take the exported power into the grid to be able to resell it so that the utility is making a profit, they're there, and the value goes. Storage multiplies that factor. It's now well, a it's, true... You guys in the Solar Energy Association, do you favor distributed storage or centralized storage? The jury's out on that one. Personally, they're, they're, they're both distributed. Yeah. But distributed solar that supports the grid, but the grid, I think, ultimately has to have some solar shock absorbers within there. But who's gonna pay for it? And that's why I'm saying it should be distributed. Who's that's why I ask. <laughs> Who can pay for it? Who has a value proposition to be able to have it within you want me to pay for theirs? No. You want, you want, you no. Want me to pay for it? I no. would. I think that's beyond fair. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, it isn't make, necessary. Let's make, unless, let's make it. It isn't yeah. necessary. Yeah. 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 One last question, and then we got to go because we're way over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, one last question is this. Why not put a box on every PV installation, old and new, that, that includes a, um, an agreed algorithm? Okay, that says at a certain point we're not taking any net energy metering. We're, we're just going to ground that. We're not going to take it. Sort of curtailment on a unit by unit basis. And nobody really suffers except that the homeowner who would like to sell a lot of energy back to the, the PV utility wouldn't. Well, most people and, and don't sell electricity. They just you know what I mean. Offset their right. Yeah, offset their total usage. Right. right. So I mean, but if if you said, look, we, we we can't take it past a certain point. We're all agreeing on what that algorithm says. We're all agreeing on on you know how it should work, uh, and everybody takes it. Old customers, new customers, everybody who has an interconnect, and you get it automatically. You know, if you and if you want to connect, an you put the yeah. well, no. If you want to connect, you got to put the box on. Uh, if you want to sell power back to us, you're going to put the box on. And if you know, if the algorithm says no, not at this hour, not at these these days, whatever it is, you know, you, they, you don't sell in that period of time. So it's self-controlling. What do you think about that? Would you do that? They're already yeah. in development. Yeah, it's part of the mix. And this yeah. is what Hawaii is leading in on. development. Where in in Hawaii? 
Why isn't it out it, there? Well, it's you have to work with the utility and figure okay. out what you the, wouldn't what oppose the problems that then. are. Well, absolutely not. And if you wanted to keep the value of that excess solar, store it. If the utility says, I don't want it, you store it and put it back out or use it later, you're not losing anything. You have the option, if you want to capture that lost energy. Okay, last question. Sure. How is this going to play out? <laughs> I, I think we already see it. Oh, I wish we I knew. I think we see but, um, already. You know? it's, it's an overwhelming change that can't be stopped. It's, it can be slowed down, but it's... But it, how's it going to play out? I, I agree with you, I, absolutely. I, I don't know. It, it, I, it will, it will be. Know. The question depends, is on what it depends, terms. It depends a lot on how the utility uh, deals with it. They, you know, if, if they jump out and take the lead in making this work, instead of letting it happen as it will, that, you know, that... That would be a big game changer if the utilities said, you know, it, we're changing, really changing. We're going to become facilitators of as much renewable as we can get, and we're going to earn our living by making would this you, happen. Would you put storage on, at the utility level, at the general level, the central level? I, I think it could go both ways. Distributed, perhaps at substations. That, many, that would many be a good questions place to involved do it. in this. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and, and oops, sorry to interrupt you, your musing. No, I, I, but, don't, I don't want yeah, you. Yeah. No, well, musing is half yeah, the well, problem. Yeah, yeah. Identify mm -hmm. what you want to do. Um, we're we're way over our time, but yeah. I think it's really interesting. We could go on for hours. We come back. And we should time. come back. We yeah. should come back and do this. <laughs> but I wanted to offer you, Leslie, the opportunity to wrap it up, summarize it. What have we been talking about? What you is know, your what final we've been talking. My here? final statement just for today is distributed generation can be part of the solution. And there, we have so much to give and to offer, and there's so many options to be part of the solution for everyone to benefit. And for um, the powers that be to not see it as, as a problem, it should be part of the solution. And that's what's going to happen. Chris? Um, I think that, that we're getting out of phase one of what mm -hmm. solar does to the grid. Phase two is starting, and the whole world is watching Hawaii and what it's going to do. Yeah. Now it's, again, I keep saying that word value proposition, it's what is it worth the utility, what is it worth to the consumer, now we need to get the fairness, the, the equality issues on the table, add technology that's there and being worked out, it's a little bit of technology and a fairness issue would go a long way and set set this as a model for all the, I mean, that's what everyone keeps talking about. We can be the model, we can be the model. We're becoming the model. It's already happening. Very optimistic. It should be faster. Amen. Yeah. Ray, what do you want to say to close? Well, it's a great time to be in the business. <laughs> it, really, it really is, it's exciting. I, yeah. I really enjoy what we're doing. And, um, and you're helping out a lot, Jay, with the, uh, your shows. and items that you bring it's, before the public this way. It's the right questions. Well, but you can never predict exactly what we're going to talk about, can you? <laughs> That's, That's okay. true. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Thank you, Jay. Ray. Nice you. Aloha. Yeah. We'll do it again. Promise me. All right. Yeah. I promise. Mm, I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I promise. <laughs> you mock her. Yeah. So. Oh. I know, I know. Uh, There's got to be some oh, sort of... It's maybe a, little something, maybe, you know. maybe a public <laughs> apology. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be back tomorrow. We have more to come tomorrow on Thursday at Think Tech Talk. Aloha. <laughs>